Hello, welcome to Biograde TV. If you're new here, please subscribe and turn on the notification so you don't miss our next video. Sechuayo Kampande, South African traditional ruler who fought colonialism. Having a stature of a giant, measuring over 6 feet 6 inches and weighing about 160 kg, Sechuayo Kampande was the Zulu king that the British had to conquer in their hopes of colonizing South Africa. Born in about 1826, Sechuayo was a son of Zulu king Mpande, the great Zulu king Shaka was his uncle. A rivalry existed between him and his brothers, which led to a battle in 1856. In the battle, he killed Mbuyazi, his younger brother and arch rival, along with five other brothers of his. With this victory, he sealed his rulership of the Zulu kingdom, though he did not ascend the throne immediately as his father was not dead. He waited 16 long years until 1872 when his father died. Still worried about other family threats to his position, in 1861, he ordered the death of his father's favorite wife and her children, with only two escaping. What a game of throne! When Sechuayo became king, he established a new capital which was the custom and called it Ulundi, meaning the high place. He went on to reorganize and expand his army, adopting some of the methods used by his uncle Shaka. This would prove very crucial in the future when he faced the British. In 1878, Sir Henry Battlefair, who was the British High Commissioner for South Africa, began to be bothered about the might of the Zulu state, fearing that the powerful kingdom would stand in the way of British interests. He deliberately tried to provoke King Sechuayu, claiming he had trespassed on some borders and demanded compensation from him. He also compelled his subordinates to send messages complaining about the rule of Sechuayu. But Sechuayu did not fall for fresh trap, being fully aware of the power of the British army, so he remained calm. However, he sent a message to Fair saying that they were both equals and that since he doesn't complain about how Frey ruled, he too should not complain about his own methods. Seeing his plans were not working, Frey then demanded that Sechuayu disband his army and gave a deadline for that to happen. This, Sechuayu was never going to agree to, for what power does a king have without an army? His refusal was all Fer needed and he declared war on Zululand, which is remembered as the Anglo-Zulu War of 1879. In the first confrontation in the Battle of Insandilwana, Sechuayo secured a victory against the British, though with very costly losses. He tried to make peace after that battle, but to no avail. In the two subsequent battles that followed, the Battle of Intombe and the Battle of Hilbane, the Zulus were again victorious. However, there were yet more battles to fight and the British badly wanted to regain their pride after their multiple defeats at Sechuayo's hand. They were able to defeat the Zulus in the battles of Rock Drift and Kambula. Although the Zulus had an opportunity for a counter-attack, that would have secured a meaningful victory for them, Sechuayu refused to carry out such an attack as he still hoped for a peaceful settlement, so he was only satisfied to chase off the British without provoking further retaliations. Unfortunately, all moves for peace the king made were turned down by the British, who came back with a much larger and better equipped army and succeeded in capturing the capital during the Battle of Ulundi, burning it down. Sechuayo was removed from his position as king 
and exiled first to Cape Town, then to London. In London, his dignified and gentle manner won him public sympathy, and in 1881, Lady Florence Dixie, a correspondent of the London Morning Post, began writing articles and books about him and how poorly he had been treated. Finally, in 1883, he was allowed to return to Zululand. Back home, the British tried to restore him to the throne but failed. In the civil war between Sechuayo's supporters and Chief Uzibebu's forces, Sechuayo was wounded but was able to escape. He later settled at Eshowe, where he died on the 8th of February, 1884. The wagon which was used to carry his body for burial was placed on his grave, and the wagon's remains can be seen at Ondini Museum near Ulundi. In Britain, a blue plaque still exists at 18 Melbury Road, Kessington, honoring and remembering Sechuayo. Historians consider him as the last king of an independent Zulu kingdom. His son, Dinu Zulu Kasechuayo, with the support of Boer mercenaries, was made king on 20th May, 1884. What have we missed out of this history? Let's know in the comment section. Will it be ridiculous to subscribe to our channel? If no, please like this video, share and subscribe to our channel.